So ribboning. Um, ribboning is the process of attaching all of our pieces together. Um, so kind of what we're going to be doing, just the overview. Um, this is the like very last step, well, hopefully the last step of this project, assuming it goes well and you're careful. Um, yeah, so this is just assembling them together. So all of your like sawing, filing, sanding should all be done before you start this. Um, sanding after your pieces are riveted is really hard to do. Sometimes you'll have to do a little bit for like cleanup if you're a little too aggressive on the hammering part of this process, but generally you want all that stuff done before, and your patinas as well. So if you're doing black or blue on your copper, um, all of that should be done like you just need to stick them together. Okay, so the kind of overview of what we're doing. Um, we all will be we will be like making our own little mini handmade clamps. So we'll be drilling holes in all of our layers, um, inserting a piece of wire, and then hammering it to kind of make yep a mini clamp. So, um, so yeah. The first thing I want to do is to kind of line everything up and figure out where I want my rivets to be. So in general, each piece needs two rivets to keep it like stable and secure and keep it from swinging around. Um, however, if you have a little piece like these little birds, um, they really only need one because they're so small. But anything larger than like a half, three quarters of an inch should have two rivets. Um, so yeah, the first thing I'm gonna do, lay everything out and then decide where I want my rivets to be. So at least two, generally it's a good idea to put them on either end of your piece instead of really close. So you're, you kind of like tack your ends down, it's a little more stable. But they can be decorative. So if you want them to use like as an eyeball, some of you I think are doing, doing that. Um, yeah, they can be part of your design as well. So first thing I want to do, plan out where I want my holes to go where I want my rivets to go. And I'm gonna do that on all of my top layers. So if I was actually making like this, this piece and this piece are both my top layers. Anywhere where like the top of a rivet would be. So the top of the tree, the bird, the leg, and then the two arms, the arm and the foot. So anything that's on the very top layer, I wanna plan out where those rivets are going first. Um, and then I'm going to drill a hole. So I'm going to get rid of my second piece. And these are scraps, so I'm not being very gentle. But you guys, this is like um, the part there where you need to be most careful with your project. Like you've already done all your sanding. And you may have noticed if you like scratch it around, it's going to ruin all the sanding you've done. So you're being like super gentle. This is your little baby, right? And you're just trying to put it together. Gotta keep it alive. Okay, so once I plan that out, I'm going to carefully move my pieces, not fling them across the table like I just did. And I want to center punch where I want to drill my holes. Um, Doing the center punch is especially important for, whoops, for riveting because I want my whole, my like rivets to be exactly where I want them to be, especially if you're trying to fit them in like a little tight space um, or like a really thin piece of metal. And I don't want to drill like accidentally off the edge. So doing the center punch is really important. Um, I'll pass this one around. This is an example of good rivets, but if you look really carefully at this left one, there's like a circle around the rivet, like a scratched in circle, um, and that's from not center punching. Um, sometimes it's easier for the drill bit just to like bend and skate around the surface of your mother, metal, rather than um, actually like go through your metal. So the center punch helps it to go through. Um, the next important thing for drilling a hole is that I have the right size drill bit. So 
almost all of the drill bits over there are the same size, but we do have some slightly smaller ones. So generally if the one in there looks like the one in there, it should be the right size. But if you want to make sure, um, we're using the ones from this little Tupperware, or not Tupperware, container. Um, number 51 drill bits. So that is the exact same size as our wire. Um, so our wire will fit very snugly in that hole, which makes riveting like 50 times easier. We only ha we have one little pack of skinnier drill bits, number 56. So the higher the number, the skinnier the drill bit, and we want to stick with the larger ones. So um, now I'm going to go drill these holes. If I have another top layer, I also want to drill holes, all the top layer holes before I move to like a lower level. That makes I will drill those holes now as well. Once I have all of the holes drilled and all of my top layers, then I'm going to move to my second layer. Most of you only have two layers on top of each other, but some of you have three. And we'll get there in a minute. Okay. So, there's two options on how to do this next part. I haven't decided if I'm going to show you both of them. There are two like hard parts about riveting. The first one is getting your holes to line up perfectly, all of your holes to line up perfectly together. Um, and the next one is like having the right length of wire, which again, we'll get there in a minute. Um, but I want to drill holes in my back layer that correspond to the holes in my top layer. And there are two ways to do that. The first one, and I think generally the easiest one, is to tape these pieces together. Um, if you have a patina, like the blue or the black, sometimes, depending on the tape, it can, if it's super sticky, can kind of pull off your patina. So if you stick your tape to your clothes, it will get less sticky and then not pull your patina off. So I want to tape these together. Um, so that they are lined up exactly how I want them to be lined up. So again, I'm being very gentle here. Oops. And I want to tape them pretty tightly. Um, so this method is easier to get your holes lined up, but sometimes can cause other problems. So I want to make sure my pieces are lined up exactly where I want them to be. I taped that one a little crooked actually. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to poke through where my holes are, which sometimes helps if you do that before. Just tape them together so you can see where they are. Okay, so yeah, two options. Um, the first one is now that I've taped them together, I am going to take these two taped pieces together um, over to the drill press and drill through the holes on the top layer. 
um, into the back layer so that they like line up perfectly. Um, like I mentioned, this method is easiest to get your holes to line up perfectly, but you do have to be very careful when you're drilling. Um, these drill bits are fairly fragile, so if I just like go through really fast, sometimes they can snap off in your holes and then they're really hard to get out once they're broken in there. So if, I'm, if you guys choose this method, If you don't want to do that method, the other option is to drill through your top layer, tape it to your bottom layer, and then center punch through the hole you've already drilled, like onto your back layer, untape them, and then just only drill through one your back layer by itself. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, um, if I have three layers on top of each other, this. Um, now that I have these two drilled, then I'm going to tape it to my third and repeat this process. So I should already have, you never want to drill like through two layers for the first time, if that makes sense, like straight through two layers. You should always have like the holes on top already drilled. So they're just kind of like a guide down to the back instead of just like trying to force it through all three at once. Um, so yeah, I don't have three layers, just two. So now I'm gonna untape them. Mm. And once I have all my holes in all of my layers, then I can start riveting. So if I have other pieces, I wanna drill all those holes before I start this next portion. Um, okay, so riveting time. All my metal is prepared, and now I just kind of make the little clamps. Um, yep, so we have the three different types of metal wire. Um, up to you which one you use. If you want them to like blend in, you can use the same color. If you want them to be a little more distinct, then you can use a different color. They all work the same, so it's totally up to you, just kind of based on color. Um, make sure that you use the wire on these black spools. There's like a couple little pieces in there that are skinnier wire. Um, and I want my wire to be the exact same size as my hole because it will make it much easier. So a thick wire. Um, and then I'm just going to use some snips from in that cabinet to cut a piece to work with. Um, when you guys use the snips, it kind of like mm, squishes it up into a point and also it's no longer usually kind of even in an oval um, so the first thing I want to do is file the end of this flat so file that little point off Oops. so that I have a totally flat surface on there um, and then I'm going to thread it through my holes and snip off the excess. So my goal is to have a wire, it should stick out on either side like the width of a piece of metal. So I'll show you in a minute, I'll show you once I cut it. 
It's a very small wire. Um, when you guys are using these snips, try to like aim at the ground because it will shoot, especially the nickel because it's a lot harder to cut. So once you make it through, it'll like bolt across the room and maybe stab your friend in the eye. Mm. Look at it. So now I want to file the end that I just snipped and you can do, do it this way. Just be careful, again, that you're not filing the surface of your metal because you just sanded that forever. You can also take it out and try to hold it. I haven't really showed you guys these. Um, but if you're ever trying to hold something really small, these are called ring clamps. They're really for working on rings, but um, they work for other stuff as well. So. If I wanted to file the end of this wire, I can stick it in there um, and push the wedge in the other end and it like clamps it so it will hold on to it for you and it makes it much easier to file like things that are so tiny you can't barely hold them. Okay, so file the end of that flat and This is, I'm just going to hold it for you guys, but that's kind of about the length you want it to be. So it's literally just barely sticking out from other, either end. Um, if your wire is too long, you're going to have a, a lot of problems when you try to rivet. And I'll show you, I'll do my next one with too long of a wire so you can see what happens. But just barely sticking out either side. <coughs> Okay, so now I can start riveting um, the actual like hammering part of this. Um, so I want to use one of these hammers because it has the tightest curve. Um, my goal is to hammer in the middle of this wire, which is like a very tiny target. So the tighter curve you have, the easier it is to hit a small part. Um, don't use the flat side. People always use the flat side, but these have really sharp corners, so you can put like a giant half moon dent in your piece that you probably don't want there. Okay. So I'm going to hold my pieces down carefully. I want to do this on a steel block. Um, if you try to just do it on the table, you're just going to hammer your wire like into the table. Um, I need the steel back there to provide some resistance. Okay. Um, I said hammer, but this is more of a tap. Gentle. This is like texturing hard like that and this is like much more gentle slow little taps um it's actually a little easier to hold if you, like to aim if you put your finger on top that gives you a little more control of where you're hitting um so as you start hitting what you're doing is compressing the metal so because it fits so tightly in this hole, it can't like move around side to side. All it can do is like squish down and get larger in circumference. That's my goal. So as, you, as soon as you see it starting to like squish out, whoops, um, then I'm going to flip and hammer from the other side. Maybe I can get this back in. Okay, so once I hammer a little from the back from one side and it started to squish out a little bit, then I'm going to flip it over and hammer from the back. Um, when I flip it over, I want to push it down so all the extra wire like pops out of the top. And that's how I'm going to get like an even, nice even rivet on both sides. So a little gentle tapping from this side, flip it over, push it down so all the extra wire pops out the top. just going to be a back and forth process of that until your rivet gets small enough that it tightly clamps your two pieces together. And my goal this whole time is like
like to hit in the middle of this wire until these pieces are like pretty snug together. So you can move them, but there's some resistance. Um, yep. If you want more of like a rounded little rivet, the very last step you can do is hammer around like the outside of the rivet just to kind of knock those little edges down. Um, and that will give you more of like a little dome. But that's more aesthetics. So that's what your goal is. Um, any questions? Okay, so I'm going to do that other one in a minute, but I'll pass you around some example so your goal is like a nice even rivet on both sides that's like yeah nice and neat it's not like sloppy and messy um, like um, your goal another goal you have is to like not have extra holes so be careful when you're like lining all your pieces up. Um, sometimes if you don't do that well, then you have like random holes in your metal. So that's a sign of like not as good craftsmanship. So you're trying not to do that. Um, if you start riveting and then you, you're like some of your holes aren't lined up completely. Like if you look at this one, the holes don't overlap perfectly. So a wire is not going to fit through there. This side, there you go. Um, if that happens to you, you're going to kind of just repeat the drilling process. So I'm going to tape these back together and hold them down tightly and re-drill so that my holes line up. But you would like to avoid that if at all possible. Okay, let's do, let's do a battery. And then we'll be done. Kind of the biggest problem that people run into is A, using, is just A, not being careful through this process and slow. Like it takes some time, so don't try to rush it. Um, and then the next kind of big problem people have is that their wire is too big. So this piece, I don't know if you guys can see that, is kind of too big. It sticks out pretty far from the sides, like in, term, in metal terms, I guess doesn't actually stick out that far. Um, but if your wire is too long, when you start to hammer, like if it sticks out really far when you start, it is going to want to just bend over rather than like get shorter and compress. Um, so if your wire is too long, what is, can you see it? It's starting to just flop over. So if it's starting to flop, that means your wire is too long. Um, you can sometimes, I would generally at this point just suggest cutting it shorter. Um, but if you're having trouble doing that, at least get some pliers and try to straighten it out before you continue. Um, if you see it happening, just stop. I think a lot of people think they can fix it and then they just hammer it down and then it looks like that, which is not great. Um, so yeah, you're trying to avoid like a flopped over rivet. So use a small wire. You're also trying to avoid hammering your whole surface around your rivet. So your goal, be careful where you're hitting. Take your time. Don't hit that hard. If you're hitting hard, Like there's a pretty high likely likelihood you're gonna dent all of your metal up. So you guys can look at that one. That's a bad one. That's your goal of what to not do. Um, here also are some not great rivets in this project. There's multiple not great things about this project, but one of them is the rivets. So this, yeah, no folded over wires like this. 
no random holes. Here is another not great example if your rivets don't actually work. Um, yeah, so your goal is nice, secure rivets that are nice and neat and not flopped and folded over, kind of like these ones are. Um, yeah, most important things, just be slow about it, and be gentle and be careful, and don't try to rush it, because that's when you kind of run into problems. Um, so yeah, riveting is your final step, unless you've had a little bit of difficulties while riveting. Um, so your like very, very, very final step is to fix any kind of problems that might have occurred while riveting. So, for example, if you like hammer all your surface of your metal up, um, then your goal, your very last step is to sand that so all of your like dents come out. If you're hitting gently, if you're tapping rather than hammering, right, you won't really have that big of a problem with this. Um, so yeah, final step: sand out any dents and also any like scratches that may have happened if you aren't like being very careful. So this one needs a little more sanding. The rivets look good, but it didn't have like the final cleanup. Um, just as a reminder, any surface that is showing should be sanded. So like the front of this copper piece is sanded, the back of it does not need to be sanded because it's hiding, right? But the front and back of the brass piece need to be sanded. So the back of your project should also be sanded. Um, even if you if it's like just plain metal and you pulled off the plastic, you still should sand it. You can jump if you just pull off the plastic. You can jump straight to 400. Um, but every surface of your project that is showing should be sanded, and then you're done. Um, any questions? Where did you say to keep those wires? Oh, all these wires are in the cabinet under the drill press, um, along with the hammers. Pretty much all the riveting stuff is under there. The steel blocks are under there as well. Um, so yeah, the rest of class today is work time. If you haven't cut your silver, you should do that today. Um, you are welcome to work on whichever project you want to. Just as a reminder, they're both due the last day of class, which is a date I can't remember, but after spring break. So Friday after spring break is our last class. And both of those projects are due at the end of that class. So you still have some time to finish this. Um, I was going to say one more thing. Oh yeah. So we have two classes left. Next week we're going to talk about how to finish your ring. So and then the last class after spring break is just a work class to finish everything up. So that's kind of our plan for the end. Cool. Mm -hmm. So it's like the same thing.